like to to the to the father out there that's trying to provide for his child, the best way that you can provide is to be able to pass down knowledge. Mm. Because even though David is talked about as the great one of the greatest kings in the Bible, True. it was his son that built the temple. Mm. So you might be the person that's laying the blueprint, but you can't do the, be the builder. Well, if Solomon is the wisest man, he would have had to got getting his gained his wisdom from somewhere. Mm. Right? That's good. So we got to be able to understand are we the blueprint or are we the builder? Welcome to The Dash. You know The Dash is that tiny line between your life start date and end date. It's your story, the chapters in your book, your journey. Your journey. Your journey. Your journey. Your journey. Your journey. Get ready for real conversations with real people telling real stories about the realities of failure, setbacks, and success. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. We're rolling. Let's go. The Dash in three, two, one. Hey, what's up, everybody? I am Lady Jade, and welcome back to the Dash Podcast. Thank you so much for continuously supporting your girl. I am so appreciative. Don't forget, if you haven't already subscribed, hit that subscribe button. I need you to I need you to go ahead and subscribe. Um, share with your family and friends. Uh, like, com- comment. I love to get the comments. Yes, I'm the one that actually responds to them. So just thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, you know, we say it all the time that we want financial independence. Right? Don't we all want that freedom, financial freedom? Well, our guest today is here to lead us to the promised land. Yes, he is. Uh, <laughs> he's a nine-year NFL vet, Super Bowl champ. I'm, I'm trying to see if he got that ring nah, on I today. Didn't bring it today. You ain't bringing the <laughs> ring. You're not gonna bring the ring. Because I need him to come March 11th. Oh, We're going okay. To that I, later. I got you. Yeah. And now he's an entrepreneur, CEO, and founder of Stat Financial. Correct. You guys, Tony Hills. Well, thank you. For, for having me, first yes, and foremost. Thank I'm you. excited, so let's get into it. Now, let's Tony, how you going to come and not bring the Super Bowl championship ring yeah, now? Yeah, man, because I always, it's, <laughs> it's about layering, right? Okay. Compounded interest. Oh, oh okay. Right? You, you can tell he's a finance yeah, guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so we get them hyped now. We push another thing later. I love that. They come and they see it, and then we bring them back to talk about it. Okay, okay. This is how I ensure you bring me back on the show. I love that. I like that. Absolutely. I like that. Okay, so let's talk about it. So who is Tony Hills? Oh, well, uh, I'm a servant, first and foremost. Um, you know, I, I thank God for everything that I have. Mm-hmm. I'm a husband. I'm a father. Mm-hmm. Um, entrepreneur. Uh, I'm a lot of different things, but yet I'm one thing. And I think that's all encompassed of just a servant of whatever God, you know, wants me to be. Mm-hmm. And uh, for me, I've, I've been fortunate enough in life to find my purpose twice, right? Mm-hmm. One in the NFL, which gave me a platform to be on shows and things like this. Mm-hmm. Uh, and now in the financial space, which I truly, truly enjoy because I feel like out of both of those things, this this is something that I'm doing now that I feel like truly can make a difference in people's lives. You know, it's not very often that you have a, a former athlete that I can tell you have a love for the financial space. Yeah, absolutely. Like if I met you. I would, I would, I, w- I don't know if I would say NFL first. Yeah. I just speaking to you in the brief time we have, you give me finance, God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I do, I do love it. I, I think more than anything, is it's a duality, right? Mm-hmm. I do love the financial aspect of it, but I really love understanding what finances can do because the reality is, mm-hmm. is we always talk about financial freedom. That's not what people want, mm-hmm. right? Um, If we were on an island and you were never going to get off this island and you had $15 million, would that mean anything to you? Good point. Right? So it's not the money that matters. The thing that matters is people want their time. Ooh. Right? So financial freedom is really time freedom. Right? So like if, if my kids, I'm in a position to where if my kids are having a play, I don't have to miss that play. Yeah. I can move all my meetings to the side. I don't have to worry about income coming in. It's going to come in, and I can go see my kids grow up. And that little five-minute play, ten-minute play, where my child is, you know, being the teacup and the tea play, whatever it is, yeah, yeah, yeah. means the world to them, Yeah, which means the world to me. And that's what having that financial freedom, which equi- equates to time freedom, actually means. Okay, I, think more I love people that. Want that. Yes, time. You're absolutely right. Yeah. I, you know, I'm gonna start saying that now because yeah. I do. I I layer it all, but ultimately the goal is yeah. to free our time. Yeah, absolutely. We, that's we, the root of it. Yes, right. That's, that's the good. Root of it. Okay, so 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 teach us, teach us because you we have stat financial. Yeah. Um, 
a lot of people would say, well, the only reason why you have time freedom and financial freedom is because you played in the NFL. You made a bunch of money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be great if statistically you didn't have almost 80 percent of athletes in the NFL that go broke two to 12 years after they after they retire. Mm. Right. So I can understand, again, when we don't know the in-depths of things, it looks good. Yeah. If you understand and, and not to go off on a tangent, but contractually. The only money that you get is the money that's guaranteed. The whole contract is not, mm. right? Um, we all understand taxes, mm -hmm. right? So you pay your taxes in Texas, right? Yes. Okay, I played. In, I got to. I played. Ain't gonna come looking for me, Tony. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I got you, and uh, we, we we can help you with that too. But uh, you know, I've played in probably at least twenty, thirty different cities. Mm -hmm. For every city I played in, I had to pay the taxes on the place that I live and also the city that I played in. So I got hit wow. twice, right? Wow. And so I didn't even, I wasn't even the guy that was making the the multi, multi millions of dollars. Now right. I did very well for the longevity aspect. I did very well. Right. But when you're talking about 30, 40, 50 million, it's a different bracket. Yeah. You know? And so it's all of these particular things that we have to understand um, when it comes to finances, taxes, um, understanding not only what taxes to pay, but how to pay your taxes, you know, are the different tax breaks, mm -hmm. right? Not just the ones that they tell you, but the yeah. ones that they don't. Yeah. And here's a here's a little uh, you know tidbit. If you've ever taken the tax book and looked at it, probably about the first four chapters is about paying your taxes. The rest of it is about how to avoid it. Well, first of all, I can honestly say I've never picked up a tax book and read it. Yep. But that's my fault. Yep. So there are a lot of ways that we can obviously avoid paying these taxes. Absolutely. Where do I get this tax book? I need to read. Chapter five through. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, there's there's so many different ones like, you know, you, you YouTube University. We can sure. start there. Yeah. Uh, Audible, you know, how to how to not pay taxes, not paying taxes for dummies. There's so many different books out there. Right. And all of the information is, is really good information as uh -huh. it pertains to that. But I would say that where we start is start with the government sites. Right. What That's is good. the IRS code 643B Intel? What is Section 7702? What are, you know, um, Tefra and Defra and Tamra, like all of these names is like, man, I'm speaking a different language. Yeah. I get it. That's how I was when I first started. You have to imagine I did one thing for almost 30 something years. Yeah, play football. Right? Yeah. Exactly. Right. So I'm telling you, if I'm the smartest person in this room, guys, we are all in trouble. So let me start <laughs> there. Let me start by saying I'm not the smartest person in the room, but I, I study in the same way that I studied and I wanted to be successful in ball is the way that I want to be a successful Ooh, in finance, right? I love that. Why did you choose finance? Again, because I understood we're in a capitalistic society. It yeah. just logic. I'm, I'm very logical. Okay. Right? So it logically makes sense. What is the thing that we struggle with as a people, right? The most. Financial. Fi yeah. Financial, right? So yeah. so here here's something that's simplistic that we can all do, right? If, you're, if you graduated with a high school degree, there's a 32% chance that you budget. Mm-hmm. If you graduate with a collegiate degree, there's a 67% chance that you budget. Hmm. So that means you have over 30% of the people in this country that don't even know what their money's doing, but they want financial freedom. That makes no sense. So logically, we have to understand where our money is going and we have to dictate it. Money is a mirror of your habits, hmm. right? So if you have bad habits, then you're going to have a bad bank account. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. the reality. Yeah. If we don't understand the difference between instant gratification and long-term gratification, yeah. then we're going to have a bad bank account. Th these things are simplistic. However, how many times have we heard, if you knew better, you what? You do better. We don't. No, we don't. Statistically, we don't. Right. So it has to be something deeper. And what I've come to find out is about the environment that you were raised in. And it's also about the relationship that you have with money, right? Oh, because there is a relationship with money. Go on, preach. Talk to talk. Yeah. Let's talk about the relationship we have with money. Yeah. Well, I mean, so I was taught that credit is bad, right? And so in Staff Financial, we teach what we call financial foundational leverage. Credit is not bad. Credit is just credit. It's the user that's bad. You don't mm -hmm. understand how to use it, how to leverage it. Mm -hmm. So here's an idea. If I know that every month I'm going to pay my bills, right? Mm -hmm. Whatever I pay my bills with, pay it on a credit card. Now, it takes discipline. Whatever I, when I get my finances, put it in a checking account, attach that credit card to the checking account, put your money in there, don't touch it. And now set it on auto pay. So now the same thing that you were going to spend with your debit card, which is, in my opinion, useless, right? It is. Uh, you now pay with your credit card, and now you're getting rewards back. 
Right. You're elevating your credit. You're getting rewards back. Now, here's some here's some things of what we use with our clients. So we have a client. I put her on that system, right? Now, guess what happened? She goes and looks at her budget and found out that her grocery bill dropped because she gets rewards back when she shops on groceries. She found out that her gas yeah. bill dropped. Why? Because she gets rewards back when she shops, you know, with her credit card. Yes. On top of the gas pro, uh, programs that they have. So it's just these little simple things that we can look up and see, oh, dang, you know, I got an extra hundred dollars. But I think a lot of times we kind of, you know, shoo shoo small beginnings. Everything started small. Ooh wee. Right. Before that's there good. was a Walmart that's all over all over the nation. It was one store in a small country town we never heard of. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Kroger, the same way. Yeah. Right. Before we had all these buildings up, there was nothing but land. All ideas, all change starts in the mind, yeah. right? So you have to be able to see it first. And then once you see it, what the good books say? Write the vision down and do what? Hey, uh, what does it say after that? Write it down and uh, make it plain. Uh, is it something else after that? We'll roll with that. Okay. <laughs> Look, don't challenge me on the Bible right here in the middle. <laughs> she starts sweating, y'all. Yeah, she, I was like, she's I a was good your, person. She's a good yeah, human. I, I promise. Like, Hold on, I know this one. I promise you. <laughs> make it plain, and that plain is just that plain is just being able to understand you have a pure vision. So if I have a pure vision, I can't get knocked off my pivot, mm-hmm. right? So like, the girls want to go out. Girl, we going out, we going. You look at the budget, the budget says stay your ass at home. Yeah. Then now you have a decision to make. Yeah. You know, and that's another thing too. If we're gonna, if we're gonna set this particular plan that we have, let's stick by it. Because if you can't even stick by the words you set for yourself, then I'm not gonna trust you. That's good. You know, you said something earlier about um delayed gratification. Yeah. Um, I just heard a sermon on delayed gratification. Yeah. I think we live in a society, it's hard for a lot of people to understand the importance of delayed gratification. Like right now, I would love to get me a new car, right? Mm-hmm. My car has been paid off. Mm-hmm. Um, I probably have my car I'm, it's about to be going on 10 years. Mm-hmm. Can I technically afford a new car? Absolutely, I can. But there are other things that I want to do with my money right now. So I have to decide, do I want to look good when I'm pulling up mm-hmm. or do I want to invest, flip that money into something else? And then where it's, a, you know, I, I I can attain it easier yeah. later. It is the hardest thing for us as a community, yeah. especially when you're looking, you said it, you're looking at Instagram, everybody yeah. has this and that. And if you don't have this and if it doesn't look like that. Then you ain't popping, right? Yeah. And um, that's what we toil against. And sometimes we will end up going broke trying to please other people. And the reality is, is that when you're broke and nobody's there to help you, you realize that that was the wrong move. Mm. And I tell people all the time, um, you know, just because you can pay for something doesn't mean that you can afford it. Wow. Right? That's That's deep. Just because, that's deeper. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. deep. Just because I can pay for it doesn't mean I can afford it. Majority of people are living paycheck to paycheck, Right. <laughs> You know, it's so funny you just said that. I was just about to bring up paycheck to paycheck. Let's yeah. talk about it. Yes. Yeah. So majority of, I think it's like somewhere around 60 to 73% of the people in America live paycheck to paycheck, right? That means that you have one source of income, right? Now, we just all experienced COVID. Yep. Look at everything that took place. We don't even have to go to people. Look at the businesses. Mm-hmm. Look at the businesses that were only in one frame structure mm-hmm. that had not changed over years and years and years and years and years. You had businesses that were going bankrupt and they were going out of business that you never thought would have happened. That's true. Right. And they were dealing with hundreds of millions of dollars. Now let's look at the average worker that, you know, in our community, if we're talking about black men, black women, you're talking about maybe 50, $60,000 a year. Mm -hmm. So when that's snatched from under you, now what do you do after the credit cards run out? What do you do? And so the thing is now we have to start thinking about the importance of other legs, infinite streams of income. And that looks different for everybody. But what I want to push is I just want us to do it. So if you're the person that works, you know, you're the the sales manager at Walmart, but then you also have a T-shirt business, you're already doing better than the person that only that works at Toyota. Right. 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 Because if Walmart decides, you know, hey, we're we're done with you, then I still have this business that I've been working on on Walmart's dime. I tell people this all the time. A lot of times they have an issue with their job. I said, then look at it as a business partner you no longer want to do business with. Let the job take care of the chief things in life, the food, the water, your mortgage, your clothing, your rent, all of those things. And then that's the business partner that you want to divorce. Well, then now do the work on the business. This is the thing that a lot of people don't want to hear and because I don't sugarcoat it. I work 18, 19 hours a day, a, a day mm-hmm. right? Um, the reality is this is going to be the hardest. I don't know if I can curse on here, but it's going to be the hardest shit you ever did in your life. Yeah. It's going to take sacrifice. Yeah. Like 
I literally have I, I literally have missed moments of my children growing up because of the sacrifice. And a lot of this, I, you know, I really want the men to get this mm-hmm. more than anything. Mm-hmm. In anything that we do in life, it takes sacrifice to be great. Mm. Anything. Yes. There has not been somebody that has done something great to where you looked in their life and there wasn't some sort of darkness. There wasn't some sort of adversity they had to overcome. There wasn't some sort of regret that they had. That comes with the territory. I always tell people, what are you willing to sacrifice? Mm -hmm. If you're willing to sacrifice a little, then you're going to reap the reward of that. You reap what you sow, right? For me, I've sacrificed a lot. However, I'm of the understanding that if I don't sacrifice now, then my family will have to sacrifice later. Mm -hmm. And as a man and a protector and a provider, I cannot allow that to happen. Right. So I'm willing to make those sacrifices. Woo! I hope y'all getting this. <laughs> Everything you putting out there, all the gems you dropping. I'm yeah. not like Tony. This is excellent information. You talked about adversity. Yeah. Let's talk about some adversity that you've had to overcome oh. to get you here. Oh. I, I know there's a lot. I mean, we're Where grown. Do we start? We, yeah. Where um, do we start? Because again, <laughs> you had to learn this information the same way you said you had to study to get to the NFL. You had to study to learn yeah. how to teach people how to become financially free, which leads mm. to time freedom. Yeah. But there is something that led you to this aha moment outside of seeing that the black community struggles with these finances. My mother. Let's talk about my it. My mother worked 30 something, 40 something years. Now the reality of it is that she has one son that's a retired NFL athlete and another one that's a business tycoon. Good luck with those, you know, those statistics. Right. So her life is different now. Mm-hmm. The reality of it is, is that majority of women don't have that type of ending. Mm-hmm. So I, I saw how we struggled. And I saw how she put everything she needed to put into providing for us. Mm -hmm. And I thought about what that reward would have been if we weren't successful. Mm -hmm. Right. I see the business structure for what it is. It's a Ponzi scheme. Mm -hmm. And and I'm not and I'm not knocking jobs. You need to do what you need to do to survive. What I'm knocking is relying on that job to take care of you when there's data in history that shows that it never will. I've seen people go broke trying to pay their credit cards. For the life of me, I can't understand it. I've seen women be put in homeless shelters trying to, you know, um, live up to their financial obligations to these particular companies and corporations because this person called the phone and said, I'm going to do this and do that. And they have no authority. Right. So my people perish for lack of what? Knowledge. That's why I get knowledge. I'm not trying to die out here in these streets. Whether that be physically or whether that be financially or spiritually, like, we have to get into a place to where we can stop talking about, and I'm not trying to take no jabs. This is just the conversations in the yeah. barbershop. No, I don't care sure. who's better out of LeBron and Jordan. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But we know it's Jordan. Yeah, but go ahead. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Right? <laughs> <That's just okay. laughs> but, but, but the reality is, is that we have to shift our focus. That's the point I'm making. Because not doing it is a detriment not only to us, but to our family. Mm-hmm. Like to, to, the, to the father out there that's trying to provide for his child, the best way that you can provide is to be able to pass down knowledge. Mm. Because even though David is talked about as the great, one of the greatest kings in the Bible, True. it was his son that built the temple. Mm. So you might be the person that's laying the blueprint, but you can't be the, be the builder. Well, if Solomon is the wisest man, he would have had to got, getting his, gained his wisdom from somewhere. Mm. Right? That's good. So we got to be able to understand, are we the blueprint or are we the builder? Mm. You know, that's how I look at it, right? So me, I feel like I'm a little bit of both Mm -hmm. because the way that I'm structuring my family, the way that I structure my young princesses and my princess is that there is a hierarchy, right? There's an order and there's a structure. And that doesn't mean that there's no love, Mm -hmm. but there is discipline, right? So another thing is, and and as a man, I I really truly believe this, and this all goes to finance as well because how we do anything is how we do everything. I just told my my sons this, Um, Discipline, wisdom, and love is all encompassing, Okay. right? If I have discipline to get up and do the things that I need to do, my actions are going to speak more than my words. So my discipline shows that I love you. The wisdom, right? There's a scripture in the Bible that says that consider not that we labor not for ourselves only, but for all those that want learning. So if I'm putting in the, if you understand labor, that means we're putting in work. 
If I'm putting in the labor, I'm putting in the work to be able to bring myself to this space. How much more do I expect my sons to be? I need them to be better than me. Mm -hmm. I need them to see a different light. I need them to push our family to a different level when I when I'm no longer here. Yeah. Especially my sons. Yeah. They have a sister. I have four boys, one girl. All of my boys understand that when mom and, and our daughter is in a, in, a, in a certain position, there's a protective circle around them. You cannot fail. Mm. Right. You can yeah. learn. But you can never fail because to fail means that you quit. That's the only way that you fail, in my opinion. This is all my opinion. People look at it and say, my life is a failure. Your life is only a failure if you quit. Yeah. I, you talk about, you know, everybody looks at my career, right? Say, you played 19 years in the league. Yeah, but it took me 20 years to get there. Oof, right. And it was a long-ass journey. Yeah. There was different teams that I had to prove myself to. I wasn't one of the guys that it's like, oh, this is our guy. We're going to keep him for five, six, seven, eight years. No. Right. This is my guy. Oh, okay, yeah, he's good. All right, we no longer need him. Oh, this is my guy. Keep him two, three Starting years. Over, we no yep. longer need him. So yep. like, but I'm so blessed because that got me to this point to where I realized, okay, well, I only fail if I quit. And so now you look at it and you look at my class and I outlasted longer than everybody y'all said was going to last longer than me. Mm -hmm. And it had one. It was only one reason why I was able to do that. It's because I realized that I don't fail. I just continue to keep going. I keep pressing. I keep pushing. Are you born with this mentality no. as a person? Okay. No. And, and, and that's a quick answer. Your experiences create your mentality. I don't care what anybody says, right? We look at, uh, there's a great motivational speaker out here, Eric Thomas. He was homeless. He tell you all Love the time. Easy, yeah. Right? So we all, ah, when he get going. But he gets that. You get that from him because it's in him. Mm -hmm. How can I give you something that I haven't had? That's why I have to go through these experiences. I just talked about this today on our uh, on our uh, segment, Molded Mindset Mondays. Every Monday I do a segment where we talk about strengthening the mind. Mm. Your experiences are not for you all the time. Sometimes it's for others, right? And every opportunity is not your opportunity. There's a way that God has us all structured. He's the master chess player, right? So being here today, there might be something where you say, we're going to interview Tony, but there's something that God gives me to give to you. Absolutely. To give to other people. Absolutely. And then you give me something back, and then I give it to somebody down the road, right? Absolutely. We're all interconnected. But if we're not open to understanding and going through those adversities, then we cheat the people who the message was supposed to be for, and I can't do that. Because mm -hmm. if, if Christ would have made a different decision and said, yeah, you know what, Lord, about that whole cross thing, I ain't really with getting deep. <laughs> These nails uh, yes. I'm about to get. Nah, yeah. I ain't really about that action. I'm going to go ahead. We're going to just let them. They, they should have listened in the first place. Mm -hmm. If he would have went that road, where are we at today? Yeah. So if, if I'm a follower of Yeshua, then I can't do that. I have to I have to walk the path, no matter what it is. Because I know the, the road tell you that, you know, when you come to serve the Lord, prepare thyself for temptation. You're going to go through adversity. But yeah. turn not to the left or to the right, but stay, stay forward. Because he's not going to put more on you than what? You can bear Absolutely. Right. Throw all my notes away. I look, I ain't even <laughs> gotta go to church on Sunday. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> this is Tony, thank you. I, I thank you that you saw, you know, the most successful people obviously become the solution to a problem. Yeah. You saw a problem within our community, yes. probably within your own household at yes, some absolutely. point, and you said, you know what? Most of us won't go seek the information. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna go get the information, I'm gonna study it, I'm gonna learn it. And then I am going to serve it to the masses. To me, that seems what that's exactly what Stat, Stat Financial is. That's it. But you use a name like Stat Financial to the regular everyday person. It sounds like, you know, oh, I have to be an investor to go to Stat Financial. Yeah. Who do you serve at Stat Financial? Who is your demographic? Got it. So the primary market. Um, obviously we deal with small businesses, uh, the mid-level athletes, because I feel like they're the ones that gets it the most, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and then corporate execs. Okay. The secondary market, we serve the masses because the, 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 the slogan is, um, that we're removing the fear of finances from the mind of the masses. So our secondary market is the market that, that the, the primary market is the market that makes a lot of money, mm -hmm. but the secondary market market is where our heart is as a company. And the reason why STAT is so important to me is the acronym is actually um, the first names of my, my immediate family. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nice. So every day, so it's different for me when I work. Mm -hmm. Because when I, you know, like I said, you write the vision. So every time STAT is across something, that is my family name that is being represented. Mm -hmm. So I just want people to understand that, no, STAT Financial is not just for the upper elite. It is a foundational 
financial foundational leverage platform that educates, that looks to educate, and it looks to inspire people to take the journey of removing the fear mm-hmm. of finances, false evidence that appears real. The reason why you move the way you move is because you're actually scared. And a lot of people won't admit that, but when you get down to the core of it, Absolutely. and talk to as many people as I have about their money, that's what it boils down to. You're driven for sure. Absolutely. Thanks for the support. Make sure you subscribe to the Dash Podcast YouTube channel. Also, we're available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and more. And feel free to share with some family and friends. Thanks, guys.